you met 14 year old Ling around the corner, right? what would you do or what would you say to her? Everything would be all right, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, he says it's there. Let's go. I think we can go. Yep. Can you get the police? Yeah, this is so common. You hear it all the time. The last time I think I was like really here was like when I was 14. So I've not really stepped around the area for a long time. And just now when I was turning in and I saw this particular hotel, it was actually the hotel that I was in and I was waiting for M to come. And I couldn't pay the bill for that day. It was $50 for that night, so I was really worried. And at 9 plus, I called him. And thankfully, he came at about 1. It was very unpredictable, frankly. It's always about, okay, what's the time now? You wake up when you want, you do what you want. Then I'll start to have lots of anxiety because I'm thinking like, should I go and stand tonight? Should I not stand tonight? And um, you just be hovering around to see like, who's free? Where can I sit? Which table can I sit? Which lorong can I sit? And that was just my life every day. As a child, you took me away from everything and you placed me in this place and now say to me, okay, this is my mom. I just wanted to go back to what was my family to me? Not about what's legal or what's, you know, custody. Like, I didn't understand all that. Everyone just said to me, you know, oh, just go home. I'm sure your parents love you. But is love really enough? Is love alone just enough? Through my reflections, I always said I had no choice. But then again, you know, did somebody really, you know, um, like put a gun to my head? Nobody did that. I made a very conscious choice as a child to still continue living in Geelang and I think it's because it was better than home. The coldness in the house was just unbearable. As I'm standing here now, I'm really thinking back. I'm just thinking back like, was it something that I regretted? I do. But, you know, for a 14-year-old girl, that was all I had and I just chose the best that was available for me and I made the best out of it. Yeah. Yep. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. Since it's raining, let's go inside. I think it's better to come in. Lots of the times when I try to think back about what actually happened in Geelang, it feels very vague. You know, I just, the memories are very scattered. I don't really remember them anymore. And I think it's got to do with the trauma in place. All these experiences, nonetheless, as painful as they may be, it has actually taught me to be more resilient, to taught me compassion, taught me to also be grateful, and to be more mindful and aware about life. If you met 14 year old Ling around the corner, right? what would you do? What about Wow. <laughs> um, I'll probably tell her it's okay. And, um, Everything would be all right, yeah. Sorry. You know, for a little girl at 14, like, you don't go into 
details with them, you just let them know like, hey, it's fine, you're fine, you're okay, just go on, you know. But no one actually said that to me. And so, if I really see little Ling again, I would say the same thing to her. And in fact, this is the reason why I'm doing this is because I really want to just do something good with the pain. There's another probably 17-year-old girl, 18-year-old girl, or maybe even a 25-year-old girl who's still on these streets and she has nowhere to turn to just like I did. I've always wanted to actually do something in the social work scene. The only change is I don't longer want to be a social worker or a counsellor, but I want to build up um, Green Ribbon and just ensure that, you know, we have more control of what we're able to do, of the standard and the culture that we built. Yeah. Hi, I'm Skanda. I'm the co-founder of Project Green Ribbon and her husband. <laughs> so how and when did you fall in love? I think it was really the time where he rescued me or saved me. And he was very thoughtful in his own ways. Ways when, you know, he always asked if I was hungry. There was once when I was really sick. He didn't even say he was coming home and he just came home. So he's a man of very few words, but um, he's very thoughtful and that's what actually caught my attention. Yeah. I wouldn't say that uh, you know, I fall in love at a specific time or anything like that. Even till this date, we are still discovering ourselves, you know, our marriage, you know, our, our bond as, as husband and wife. You know. But I think one of the, the, the key things which really makes me feel comfortable around her is that I can be myself. You know? Our therapist discovered this uh, with us, you know, both of us come from uh, chaos and we both found each other and I think in search of stability, mm. that's how we try to, 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 to guide our way in life. We wanted to be in a better place. Yeah. I think that was the common goal for us. Yeah. So speaking of like, the purpose, right? Yeah. Mm. How and when did Project Green Ribbon come about? I went on Twitch and I started live streaming. I was just there being me. I, when I'm down, I'm just down. I don't feel good. And when someone asks me, how are you? Oh, I just don't feel good. I don't know why. Or, you know, actually, I suffer from this. I suffer from that. And people came in and I started asking, how are you? And that's what got the conversation going. Yeah. Gradually, the culture and the community grew on its own. And that was when Green Ribbon actually sort of like grew. I just kept turning it back on again. I just kept getting up from bed, no matter how I was feeling, how hopeless, how defeated I felt. And I went back to it again to just Google, YouTube, research. Every skill that he has is YouTube and learn. So yeah. like, Green Ribbon's website was done by him as well. That's his gift. So I'm thankful to have a husband like that. It's a brilliant, my secret weapon. The reason why I do what I do in this healing journey, which I call Green Ribbon. Green Ribbon is a personal recovery for every individual who, who's with us. Is so that my children in hope can see what mommy and daddy is trying to do. Even though we are struggling. Even you know, though we are yeah. struggling. And hopefully through the process, they pick up a thing or two to know that even though yes, mom was this, 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 this. Mom was not great. She could have been better. But what is the one thing here? She never gave up. As long as our kids see that, I think that would have made me rather successful as a mom. Yeah. Regardless of everything that has happened through the ups and downs, he's always been there for me, always. He's the only one who never left. Yeah. yeah. I think I found home. Um, and it's something I'm learning to embrace. Yeah. It's funny because as you think back and you reflect back, right? 
there's so much pain, there's so much anger, there's so much emotions that's been going on. It's not been happy or easy or smooth for the past few weeks even. But as you sit down and you look back and you just think deep, then you start to realise that it's really the imperfections that make things beautiful. I think it's really much needed even for both of us to sit down and say, hey, have we thanked even ourselves yet? Yeah. Or have we thanked each other yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a love story anyway. Yeah, it's not, not a love story, not a fairy tale, <laughs> not a K-drama, <laughs> nothing of that sort. <laughs> yeah. And not Squid Game too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's just real life. It's just being real, I think, yeah. <laughs>